Hello and welcome to Bike Scoop. It's our weekly show here at Performance Bicycles about the latest products, technology, trends, anything that's going on in the world of uh, cycling that we find interesting and that we want to share with you. Mm -hmm. uh, so today I'm joined by Tom. He's from our Bikes product team. How's it going, guys? Um, and today, Tom and I are going to be talking about BMX as it is today, especially from our perspective, the lens uh, through Performance Bike. Um, we did write a, a blog post recently about the history of BMX. So if mm -hmm. you want to go to blog.performancebike.com, go check that out. It's over there. Uh, it's the history of BMX. Um, we're doing this today. And, uh, and then on Friday, we're going to have Perry Kramer of, uh, of the PK Ripper, this, is, this bike is named after, um, on Bike Scoop again. So we'll be uh, on Friday at 10 a.m. You can tune back in. We're going to be talking to, to Perry to get really an insider's view on the history of BMX, you know, where it mm -hmm. came from, all the details, where it is today, and where he thinks it's going. Um, so lots of pretty cool stuff. Um, also, check us out on Instagram if you're not already, and Twitter, we appreciate that. Um, so let's talk about BMX. There's a lot of yeah. things that we talk about on a day-to-day -day basis here in mm -hmm. the walls of performance on any given day around any corner. Mm -hmm. You can hear us nerding out about like whatever the latest <laughs> thing is, whatever the, yeah. the trend is, whatever the newest, if it's boost or non-boost, or like how much travel, or like yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. how tucked the rear wheel is into the seat post. <laughs> we were talking maybe. about that yesterday, yeah. Um, but BMX is something that's always on our mind. Mm -hmm. um, it's been you know, a staple of cycling segmentations throughout the history of cycling in general. Mm -hmm. um, and it has a deep, deep rooted history. I mean, you can spend 10 minutes reading our blog, you can watch this, but I mean, you could spend a lifetime probably learning about it, reading mm -hmm. about it, educating yourself on it. And people have done that. They've dedicated themselves to the sport. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a really cool sport. Um, you know, personally, I wasn't exposed to it until much later in life, probably about 10 or 15 years ago, just the circumstances of where I grew up. I mm -hmm. um, wasn't really into it. Um, now I'm a little bit too old to, to get into it in the traditional sense. You're never too old, though. <laughs> I mean, true. really. But what we're going to talk about today is, is how guys like me can actually start to get into the sport now. Mm -hmm. but, but Tom, what about you? I've been talking a lot. What's your history with BMX and the sport? What's your take on it? So I'm, I kind of come with a very similar background. Um, obviously, growing up in the 80s, everybody had a BMX bike back then. Um, but I was the weird kid in, in elementary school that got a mountain bike as my first bike. Um, so uh, I, I never really got into BMX that much. I did own a Schwinn Predator back in the day. Um, and that was a bike that I loved. And I can't find them anywhere. They're very difficult to find. Um, but yeah, so someday I'd like to get another one of those just to add to the fleet because um, I have way too many bikes in my garage already. Um, but yeah, my brother's actually an avid BMXer. He's, he uh, raced a lot. Um, we had um, two acres of land that we grew up on and about one acre of that was all dirt jumps in the backyard. Um, anybody from Terrace Park um, can remember that uh, back in like the 90s and stuff, there was that one weird house that had a bunch of dirt jumps back there. Uh, that was me. Um, and uh, I was mountain biking all over it, and my brother was jumping all over everything, and it was a lot of fun. So, so yeah, I grew up around these bikes all the time, yeah. And I think one of the cool things, Tom's speaking about how he wished he could track down this old retro-style BMX bike that he used to have. Mm -hmm. Well, SE, which is one of the companies that we carry in our stores, is making these kind of like retro-style bikes. Yeah. We'll, we'll talk about to, we'll talk about kind of like the specifics of the bikes as we get into it. Um, we're also today, we're gonna talk about the different types of riding, uh, people hear BMX and I think it's one thing. It's actually like six or eight or ten different things. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of also whatever you want it to be. It doesn't yeah. have to be a thing, which is like kind of uh, the beauty of it. So yeah. just real quick tidbit, BMX stands for Bicycle Motocross. It's how it got started back in the early 70s in Southern California. Mm -hmm. um, the little kids that were looking up to the motocross guys, they really wanted to do that. But they couldn't mm -hmm. do it on motocross bikes, obviously. Mm -hmm. So they just started getting their regular bikes and riding mm -hmm. around in dirt tracks, just mm -hmm. like. Yeah, started on old Schwinn's and stuff like that, and they were just riding with dad and mom, just riding around the, the track between between uh, between heats. Yeah, and so that became a thing. Um, and then a guy named Todd Lines one time did the first backflip during a BMX race. Mm -hmm. People saw that and were like, oh, tricks during BMX racing, which kind of spawned freestyle. And then in freestyle, there's all kinds of different segments. Mm -hmm. um, so before we jump into all the different segments of the sport, though, mm -hmm. Let's talk about the benefits of it. I want to talk about the benefits of getting into BMX both for ourselves, now that we might be old men, or <laughs> OM, uh, which OM uh, was the nickname of Scott Brewerhart, if I'm pronouncing that right, mm -hmm. who was one of the founders 
uh, of BMX, one of the godfathers. He started mm-hmm. Scott Enterprises, mm-hmm. which translated to S-E, mm-hmm. bicycles. And his nickname was Old Man, mm-hmm. or O-M, yeah. which is an a acronym that's still heavily used today. Yeah. And, and one of the shops I used to work at, OMS was a thing. It was like o- OMS was old man style, right? As we were getting mm-hmm. old, we, we <laughs> tried to carry our, our OMS as we could. Yeah. As we could. Um, so anyway, so let's talk about the benefits of it. So first, let's talk sure. about the benefits of getting your kids into it. Um, I think a lot of people think, um, you know, like, oh, BMX is dangerous. Mm-hmm. Well, that's not true, right? So why don't you talk about some of the places that you can ride BMX? Well, that's the cool thing about uh, riding a BMX bike is you can kind of do it anywhere. Um, it really is a bike that's not necessarily defined to the road. It's not necessarily uh, stuck in the dirt. Um, it's kind of anywhere you want to go. Um, and especially with these, with these cool uh, retro bikes, um, they're really designed for anybody to go out and ride a bike. Um, it's not just for little kids. Um, it, it's for anybody. Um, so yeah, there's um, different kinds of riding. Obviously, BMX started with racing. Um, and so most of the bikes um, that you'd see at the track or um, that you'd see back in kind of like the, the videos from the 70s, if you jump on YouTube, would be bikes that have 20 inch wheels like this bike here. Um, smaller wheels, smaller frame, they look kind of small. Um, and uh, that's, what, that's what most people think of when they think of like a classic BMX bike. Um, but Which they, it's totally evolved from there. Yes. Um, I do think one of the benefits a lot of times BMX riding is in a safe and closed kind of space, right? Yes. So there's a lot of dedicated BMX and skate parks that you can ride in. Mm-hmm. So that's a safety factor for the kids. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's a lot of places, um, there's like close to us is the Daniel Dare's Action Sports Complex. And Daniel mm-hmm. Dare's is, he rides for, uh, for Red Bull, but it's a place where you go, you pay your fee, and it's a safe place for the kids to ride mm-hmm. and, and practice the tricks and everything. Mm-hmm. The next reason that I think uh, is a good benefit is I'd say the price point of these things, right? Yeah, they're not they're not it's super a expensive. Low barrier to entry. Exactly. Yeah, like like I was saying earlier, I have a fleet of bikes in my garage, and um, a lot of them are you know worth more than some cars. And um, right. a BMX bike doesn't have to cost that much. You can get a, a really great deal if you come into one of our stores. And obviously, we we will professionally assemble it for you too, which is great. Um, you know everything's tight and everything's set up right. But they're not that expensive. They really aren't. Um, and you don't have to get all the extra gear. You don't have to get all the extra Lycra and all the, 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 the computers and all the extra stuff. Um, if, if you don't want to, um, you can just get a bike, slap a helmet on, and go out and ride your bike. I think another benefit for the kids is that, depending on the bike, like they may actually not outgrow the bike. If you get a kid's 20-inch BMX bike, that mm-hmm. BMX bike could um, stay with them for a long time, pending you know they don't crash it too bad. Yeah, 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 exactly. But yeah, like I was saying, that the 20-inch bike is kind of what we all think of when we think of like a traditional BMX bike. And um, my, my brother who races rides a bike, you know, roughly this size, you know, and he's, he's as tall as I am. He's six foot tall. So um, you, you can ride a 20-inch for a while if you want. I think another benefit to getting the kids into it is the social aspect. Get the kids out of the house. It's uh, super fun. Behind the screens. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's a lot of camaraderie. Mm-hmm. Um, I think in the scene, there's a lot of support. Now, every now and then you're going to get into a scene where there might be some egos. You just ignore those people. Yeah. 90% of the people out there are super nice and super cool. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's, I've met, you know, again, I don't ride BMX. I've met a lot of BMX pros and mountain bike pros. Mm-hmm. Like the one cool thing about most of those guys is like, like I said, like 90 plus percent of them are just super cool, easy to talk to folks with no ego. So yeah. um, I think that's a misperception, I think, of of some pro BMX stuff and, and, and some mountain stuff we're getting out of that. But yeah. That people can be too cool for school, right? Well, that's not true. That's not yeah. true at all. Um, so th- those are some of the benefits for kids. Let's talk about benefits for adults, myself included. Mm-hmm. You know, for one, you kind of look cool, right? Like, <laughs> hopefully, maybe. <laughs> Is that wishful thinking? Yeah, yeah. Well, I- I'd say I'd much rather ride one of these around, um, you know, or to go get a gallon of milk at the store than an old hybrid or something, because I'm not my dad, at least not yet. Yeah. So, you know, I don't want a hybrid with a big squishy suspension fork and a big squishy saddle. I want something cool to ride yeah. around. So that's what these bike, that's where these bikes fit in. Yeah, if I'm in the, in the neighborhood riding with the kids, I mean, you know, some people have the flat bar hybrid or the road bike. Yeah, and that's fine. One of these things, yeah. I, yeah, I kind of look like a cool dad. It's pretty boss. I'm yeah, yeah. Uh, these are also way easier to wheelie. Uh, yes. The, the, new, the new versions. Now, the small kind of entry level, like traditional BMX 20 inch bikes. Yes. Those are a little harder to wheelie, but we're going to talk about these bikes in a minute, but a lot of the new style BMX bikes have bigger wheels with fatter mm-hmm. tires, mm-hmm. and they're easier to get up and hold the balance point. Yeah, I didn't I didn't start trying to wheelie until about a year and a half ago, and I'm still not great at it. 
but it's yeah. way easier to wheelie one of these things yeah. than it is. We should definitely do the video of you and me and Kyle going outside and falling <laughs> trying over, to, trying to do yeah. wheelies. But seriously, it, 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 it's a lot of fun. And um, these bikes do make it a lot easier because the larger the wheel is, you have a greater area where you can kind of correct yourself. When you're a really small wheel, it, you basically flip over really quickly. So it, it is a lot of fun. I, I think another benefit of, of these like one, they're simple, right? Yeah. There's not a lot going on. Not a lot of extra stuff. There's not a ton of stuff to break. Mm -hmm. Again, we talked about barrier of entry. If you do break a wheel and you need something new, it's pretty low cost to replace it. Yep. But it's also simple in the fact that I can wear whatever I want yep. when I go ride this bike. I don't have to get geared up and all the stuff. I can just wear these jeans mm -hmm. and this this shirt. If I want. Now these jeans are, you know, these are skateboarding jeans. They have like some spandex in them, so there is some stretch, like 100% mm -hmm. denim. Probably not the best thing to ride in the heat of the summer, right? <laughs> probably not. But Unless you, you cut them off, you just cut them off above the knee, and you're shorts, good to go. Yeah. So shorts, you can wear shorts. Yeah, if yeah, you yeah. Want. You can wear whatever t-shirt you want. Mm -hmm. so, so it's simple. I don't have to buy a ton of stuff. Mm -hmm. um, I can cruise the neighborhood in style, and I mm -hmm. have a good time. Mm -hmm. um, so those are the benefits for you know I think the kids mm -hmm. riding and the adults riding. Mm -hmm. um, if you're just tuning into this, this is Performance Bike Scoop. Uh, we do this every Wednesday at 3 p.m. Mm -hmm. um, feel free to leave some comments, uh, and we'll try to answer those later if we don't get to them today. Mm -hmm. um, so let's talk now. We, we kind of talked about the reasons to get into it, the benefits for kids mm -hmm. and adults. Uh, let's talk about the types of BMX. Yeah. So in road cycling, you know, there's like Grand Fondos, there's race-oriented stuff, there's charity rides, and mountain biking, there's like there's downhill mountain biking and enduro and cross country race and all these different segments. Mm -hmm. And so sometimes people think BMX is just like one segment. So yeah. what are the, some of the types of BMX that are out there? So there's different kinds um, and there's different ways you can use your bike and there's actually different bikes that fit different, um, different styles of riding better. Um, BMX did traditionally start on a dirt track. That's where it all started. Um, like we were saying earlier with the bicycle motocross. Um, so that is a actual true BMX race bike. Um, like I said earlier, most of them um, that you would see have a 20 inch wheel, not unlike this bike here. This is a 20 inch wheel um, and they're small. Um, they're fast. This isn't an actual race bike. This is more of a, uh, a like a park bike or a dirt bike, and we'll get to that in a second. But um, the, the racing bikes are designed to be small, uh, light, and fast, and that's it. Um, so when you're um, racing, that's great, but as soon as you want to go do something like park riding, um, where you're going where you'd see like skateboarders and stuff like that, or if you watch the X Games, if that's even a thing anymore. It's definitely still a thing. Cool. Okay, yeah, that's how old I am. I don't even know what's going on. <laughs> the, um, the, uh, if you're grinding and stuff like that, you need a much more durable bike. Um, so a park bike, something like this, has a steel frame. Um, a lot of times it comes with pegs, and this bike here actually has pegs on it. As you can see, it has pegs on the non-drive side. Um, there are pegs, that thing sticking out in the back, and there's one in the front, um, and then the gears are on the other side, and you do that so you can, um, so you can grind and, um, you know, do some more um, extreme stuff with your bike, um, and uh, that's kind of more of a park bike, um, a, a dirt jumping bike or something like that, like a dirt well, let's jump. Let's talk about pegs for a minute. Okay, let's talk about so pegs. pegs do they always have to be on one side, or they can be on left or right, or all four sides, or front and back? What so pegs kind of go in and out of style depending on what's going on. Um, pegs kind of go all over the place. I remember back in like the 80s and 90s, you just put pegs all over your bike, and they'd be right. kind of everywhere. <laughs> you could stick as many pegs. You could have them that go in the middle of the fork and stuff. There were some weird options back then. Um, grinding pegs uh, go on one side generally, so you can jump up on a rail and slide down a rail. Usually you put them on the non-drive side away from where your gears and stuff are so you don't damage your bike um, or you don't damage your gears. Um, now though, with the new ride-out stuff that's going on, you'll see a lot of this online where um, just huge masses of people are getting out and just riding their bikes around the cities and it's awesome. And, and that's um, part of like the new school style. Of yeah, BMX. totally it's, cool. It's evolving and, as we speak in the last few years. Yeah, I mean, literally, it's brand new. And um, they'll put pegs just on the back, just one on each side of the back, so they can do a wheelie and then stand on the pegs and do all kinds of cool stuff. And they can literally, it's crazy, like climb all over the bike while it's on one wheel rolling down the street. It's wild. And that's kind of a hybrid, you know, the, the new school style of the ride outs and riding wheelies down the street. Yeah. It's kind of a hybrid and a spinoff on the old flatland freestyle yes. BMX. So, yes. So BMX started with, with racing. Yes. And then we had the backflip with Todd Lines, the yeah. Spark Freestyle, but under freestyle BMX, we have Park, which is what we're talking about, X Games type of stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, we have Street Freestyle. Um, that's just kind of like going out and finding your own place to ride. Of course, mm -hmm. you know, officially we recommend to follow all the rules and don't trespass and all that good stuff. 
if you're riding street freestyle, but there's a lot of really cool videos out there and some guys doing some awesome stuff. Uh -huh. um, and then there's going to be dirt freestyle. So this yes. is a third segment of freestyle BMX. Yeah, this was the dirt jumps I grew up with in my backyard. Yeah, yeah. And then Flatland, which yeah. I remember, that's kind of like one of the first memories I have was seeing these guys doing Flatland BMX. Yeah. Back in like the mid 80s, I'd say. Yeah, it's crazy. And they do a lot of this stuff literally just on a flat surface like a parking lot. And they can do some crazy things on a bike. It's it's pretty pretty crazy. And then and then so new school mm -hmm. is kind of like this hybrid that we were just talking about with the ride outs mm -hmm. um, that we're seeing all over the country, which is super mm -hmm. cool. If you're not familiar with the ride outs, follow SE Bikes on Instagram. Mm -hmm. They do a great job of, of covering all the different ride outs. Yeah, and that's one of the coolest things about BMX is you just do whatever you want. That's one of the neatest things about this sport is you can just do whatever you want, and there's really no wrong answer. It's just a lot of fun. Yeah. yeah. Um, so we talked about the types of bikes. Um, I know we have like kid specific BMX bikes. There's 20 inch uh, BMX bikes, 24, 26, 29. Like what mm -hmm. are the reasons that um, I would need to choose a different wheel size? So that's a really good question. Like I said earlier, um, BMX bikes generally come in kind of one size. At least that's what most people think of it as like a 20 inch bike. Um, but there are different wheel sizes and they do actually give you different benefits. Um, so if you start with the smaller sizes, um, the little kids' bikes um, can go down to a 12-inch wheel. So basically, just the bike gets really small, so a small kid can ride it, obviously. And then you, you know, as the child grows, you get them a bigger and bigger bike. Um, if you have any questions about that, you can go to your local performance, and they can help you find the right bike, size bike for your kid. Um, once you get to about a 20-inch, though, then um, the bike actually um, you can get bigger wheels. Like this one here is a 24-inch wheel. Um, this bike here is actually a 26, and that's actually got fat tires on it as well. And then the red bike over there is a 29. Um, it's a really big wheel. And the advantage with the bigger wheel is it just rolls faster. And also, if you want to do wheelies and stuff, it's just a lot more fun to ride for wheelies and stuff like that. Um, also, with BMX bikes in general, um, the way that they measure is different. If you're used to riding like a road bike or a mountain bike, you usually think about the size of the bike. Like if you're getting a mountain bike, you get like a 17-inch frame or 19-inch frame. And that's usually how tall the bike is. Um, BMX bikes are actually measured in length. So it's the top tube length is how you'd measure it. So um, myself being uh, six foot tall, I'd, you generally get a slightly longer bike than other people. Um, once you get up to the big, big spikes like these ones, they just come in one size because it's just one size and you just get on it and ride your bike. <laughs> Not that complicated. Awesome. Yeah. So I think we've, we've covered most of you know, what we have to say from performance yeah. about BMX. It's an awesome sport. We, you know, we highly suggest that you check it out, you try mm -hmm. it out. Um, Look up bike life movement. It's a really cool thing. If you're familiar with the history of BMX, started racing, if you're familiar already with you know, freestyle and all that good stuff, bike life movement is kind of like the next wave. It's like the new school BMX mm -hmm. stuff that's just coming out. Mm -hmm. uh, check that out. Thanks for tuning in. But again, this is Bike Scoop. It comes live from the Performance Bicycle Warehouse in Chapel Hill, North Carolina. We do it every Wednesday at 3 p.m. And uh, we are going to have a special Bike Scoop this coming Friday at 10 a.m. where we're going to interview Perry Kramer from the PK Ripper. Make sure you tune in. That's going to be really cool. I'm really excited. All right. So thanks again. And uh, we're going to go say hey to, uh, to our warehouse. House. Yeah, they're beeping out there. Sorry. <laughs>